My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. You are welcome to another beautiful episode of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at the applications of electromagnetic induction. We've said so much on that electromagnetic induction. So what are the applications of this electromagnetic induction? Ladies and gentlemen, the applications of electromagnetic induction are eddy current, carbon microphone, induction coil, heart pace maker, railway crack detector, electromagnetic generator, which is also called dynamo. Electromagnetic generator can be AC generator or DC generator. Then we have transformer. These are the top applications of electromagnetic induction. Now, eddy currents. What are eddy currents? We have been able to agree that when a conductor is placed in a very magnetic field, EMF is induced. And that is electromagnetic induction. The induced EMF gives rise to the induced current. So, eddy current is also a current produced in electromagnetic induction. When a conductor is subjected to a very magnetic field, eddy current is produced. Now, if we are looking at whether there is even a difference between induced current and eddy current, we can say that, okay, if this current induced is very useful, let's call it induced current, short. If this current causes loss, is parasitic, causes a lot of heat, a lot of loss in the system, in the coil, let's call that eddy current. So, we can as well summarize to say that a deep uh, induced current is a current flowing in the coils of wire in a closed circuit. Why eddy current is loops of current flowing within pieces of larger conductor due to electromagnetic induction. So, lead grammar, they are basically produced as a result of electromagnetic induction. When the armature rotates, there is a lot of a system of coils that prevent the flow of current. That is basically what we refer to as back EMF. So, a current is produced as a result of this back EMF. And it actually causes loss and parasitic. So, how do we reduce this eddy current loss or eddy losses. One, we can prevent eddy losses by laminating the core. You laminate the core so that all these losses are prevented to an extent. Two, uses of eddy current. They are used in damping of moving coil instruments and they are used in induction coil. The carbon microphone is used in telephone system. That is, it is used in mouthpiece. It compris uh, comprises diaphragm and carbon blocks. These carbon blocks are separated by powdered or granule form of carbon. What they do is they reduce the electrical resistance between the blocks and the diaphragm. And this diaphragm is what vibrates when there is electrical signal. That is the second application of carbon microphone. And we said that a good use of a decorating is in induction coil and in moving coil instruments. Now, if I ask you, what is the function of the transformer? Do we say that 
transformer is used to step up or step down voltage at constant frequency. And what voltage is transformer used to step up or step down? It is simply AC. That is alternating current system. Alternating current. Meanwhile, when it comes to direct current, to step down or step up DC, we use induction coil. So, stepping up or stepping down AC, we use transformer. To step up or step down DC, we use the induction coil. This is like a reverse of the transformer. That is induction coil for you. And the uses of induction coil are, they are used to investigate high voltage. They are used to study electrical discharge through gases. Anytime a gas or gases are conducting electricity, we don't say conduction, we say discharge. And I've been able to explain this in my video on conduction in liquids and gases. Please scroll to that episode if you still don't understand how gases conduct. A tip is that as gases conduct, they glow. We begin to see glow in them. And depending on the gas, they have their different color of glow. Then they are used in radio transmitter, most radio transmitter. And finally, they are used in operation of X-ray tubes. Now, the next things I am about to say are very, very important for your examination when it comes to electromagnetic induction. What are the features of induction coil? The first feature of induction coil is the primary. It has the primary. The second is the secondary. And the third is make and break contact. The default feature is capacitor in the primary. Let me begin with the primary. In the induction coil, the primary is made up of few tons and thick wire, few number of tons and very thick wires. How about the secondary? The secondary of the induction coil is made up of many tons and thick wire, which means primary few tons, secondary many tons. Primary thick wire, secondary thin wire. So, why is the primary of induction coil made up of few tons and thick wire, while the secondary is made up of many tons and thin wire? It is simply to increase the output. The output has a way of depending on the number of tones, generally. The make and break contact is in the primary of the induction coil, and it is used for rapid change in the magnetic flux. The capacitor in induction coil is in the primary. The use of capacitors in induction coil is to prevent sparks. Past question, what is the use of capacitors in induction coil? They are to prevent sparks, and they are also used to reduce back EMF. In induction coil, capacitors are used to reduce spark and also used to reduce the effect to prevent sparks and to reduce the effect of back EMF. I already talked about back EMF. This takes us to heart pace maker. The heart pace maker is a device for activating a tired heart. When the heart is tired, it tries to activate it. And it consists of the primary coil. This primary coil is attached to the outer part of the chest. And the secondary coil is surgically implanted inside the chest wall. So primary outside part of the chest, secondary inside the chest. And the primary coil is supplied with current impulses from one small electronic generator. As such, we try to activate the tired heart. Then we have the railway crack detector. This is simply a device consisting of a coil carrying an AC. It is a device that consists a coil 
And this coil is carrying an AC. It is used for detecting invisible cracks. Now, anytime you hear coil, coil, don't be confused again. It is simply wires that are folded, 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 folded. Or if there is a conductor here, or something here, a plate here, or a fin or magnet, you have wire around them, around like this. You formed a coil. Is that okay? Yes. Even in your house, once an electrician is done fixing your changeover switch or something, 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 and a wire is remaining all long, they will just do like this, one conductor like this. They will now roll the wire, roll, 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 before conduction. So you see that wire, that roll, that is simply a coil of wire. You can refer to that as inductor. So when you hear inductor, it's basically something like this. Coil, folding of wire. And let's look at electromagnetic generator, or we can call it dynamo. What are they used for? The electromagnetic generator are used to convert mechanical energy to electrical energy using electromagnetic induction. Using electromagnetic induction. The AC generators can be converted to DC generators as well. The electromagnetic generator or dynamo can be AC generator, which is referred to as alternator or the DC generator. Now, dynamo consists of coil rotating with a strong magnetic field. When you look at dynamo, you will see a coil. It is rotating with a very, very strong magnetic field. However, it requires external energy or external supply of energy to rotate the coil. It uses commutator for converting AC to DC which means AC generator can be converted to DC generator. What do we use? We use the commutator. And what are the features of AC generator? And what are the features of DC generator? The AC generator, they have brushes. For AC, two carbon brushes. For DC, two diametrically opposed brushes. Nevertheless, they both have two brushes. The AC generator has armature, armature winding. The DC has armature. The AC generator possesses field magnet. The DC has the field magnet. Now, the difference between AC generator and DC generator is that for AC generator, we have the slip rings. Slip rings. Why in DC, we don't have slip ring. We have split rings. Or commutator. In AC, it is SLIP. In DC, it is SPLIT or commutator. So, it's a popular question. The major difference between AC and DC generator is the presence of that. It is the presence of split ring in DC or commutator. For AC, it is slip, slip rings. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we go to transformer. Transformer is a device used to step up or step down voltage at the same frequency. Frequency does not change. Transformer has primary and secondary. Primary has the number of tones. Secondary has the number of tones. In step up transformer, the number of tones in the secondary is more than the number of tones in the primary. For step down, the number of tones in the primary is more than the number of tones in the secondary. Transformer can step up voltage. We say that is step up transformer. It can step down. We say that is step down transformer. Power is generated at a very, very low voltage. From the generator, generating station, you have a step up transformer which steps up this voltage so very high. And power is transmitted at very high voltage and low current. This is to reduce losses on the way because the higher the current, the more the heat. Current generates a lot of heat. So we transmit at high voltage, very high voltage and low current. You see 11 kV line, 33 kV line, which is very high voltage. 
Now, when it comes to homes to supply, we need to step up the voltage. And coming to your house, a single phase is around 240 volts. So the transformer that steps down to this voltage has stepped down, stepping up has stepped up. Now, efficiency of transformer is not 100%. These are the reasons. Core losses and coil losses are the reason the efficiency of transformer is not 100%. Core losses are the hysteresis losses which occur due to energy required for magnetic reversal, LD losses due to a current, and flux design losses due to poor design of the flux or core. And we have the coil losses. The coil losses is basically copper losses. It is the heat developed in the primary coil. Because of all these guys, efficiency of transformers is not 100%. If you don't want to give us the reason efficiency of transformer is not 100% in two points, you can just list these four. You can see hysteresis losses, FD losses, flux losses, and copper losses. To reduce hysteresis losses, we minimize or it can be minimized using core of soft magnetic material. When you use core of soft magnetic material like iron core, you can minimize hysteresis losses because this is a loss in the core. In fact, a decurrent is also a core loss. So to reduce a decurrent, we laminate the core. How do we do that? We make use of iron cores of thin sheets instead of block. When you make use of these iron cores of smaller sheets, instead of using blocks of iron, you minimize a D losses. And to reduce or minimize flux losses, we use efficient core design. Design the core efficiently so that there will not be the losses from this flux design. And finally, to reduce copper losses, since it is heat developed in the primary core and what causes heat? Resistance. If current flowing encounters a lot of resistance, it will generate heat. As such, we can use low resistance copper coil in the primary since this is a coil loss. As such, we will reduce copper losses. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the applications of electromagnetic induction. I hope you found this interesting. Get the flash learner jam app and begin to play with the questions. It covers all your subjects and there is flash learner's app for YA, for common entrance and every other examinations around. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this episode. Subscribe and tell your friends about these classes. See ya in the next episode. We shall still be talking about electromagnetic induction.